Hello everyone, I am Veos, and welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program video. Kerbal Space Program video, KSP, KSP, SSTO, blah 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 blah. So in this career mode, we are getting the enterprise. <laughs> we are getting the enterprise ready for a new mission. The mission is simply to take passengers to the moon and Mimis. However, we have to land on both of these moons. There are four passengers: two that want to go to Mimis and land, and two that want to go to the moon and land. A little bit of an epic adventure. I've never really done this dual moon mission type before. Now the Enterprise is a very capable vessel for the time period that it's in, so I have no doubt that it will be able to finish and complete this mission. The payout of this contract is pretty high, so it's going to be good monies, so long as we use caution and reusable crafts. First thing first is to refuel the Enterprise. It recently got an updated star drive, aka main engines, but in order to get those main engines up there I had to launch them half fueled. The reason of course is because I'm in career mode and I don't have the ability to launch something that's too heavy or too big or with too many parts. Unless of course I upgraded either the runway or the launch pad. Or not even that, just the VAB or the space plane hangar alone needs to be upgraded in order to build bigger ships, bigger and heavier ships. Most of you already know this, but for those of you who don't know, when you play career Kerbal Space Program, not science, but actual career where you have to make the monies, not only do you have to collect science in order to unlock different parts and buy those different parts, but you also have to upgrade the buildings in the KSC or Kerbal Space Center. Each building has three different tiers and with each upgrade to that building you can build bigger or larger or more heavier ships. Right now I am using the space plane hangar which is at a tier 2 level so I'm able to build ships that are only so long with I think is like 200 plus parts only and I think the weight I forget it's like 130 tons or 140 tons I can only go about 140 tons so for now those ships have to the ships that I have not only have to be reusable but fit within this margin if I go over in weight length or number of parts it won't let me finalize those ships out into the game world and upgrading buildings is expensive so I try to work with what I got. The first few refueling missions went pretty cool without a... Oh, pretty cool, what the fuck? Pretty smooth without a, much of a hitch or anything. Hitch. Oh my gosh, I can't talk. No real screw-ups observed, let's just put it that way. But it was pretty cool because I launched two of the refuelers and docked both of them with the Enterprise pretty much close to the same time. And then once they were done refueling the Enterprise, I had them both land back at the KSC but these little refuelers are pretty cool. I call them the Star Mule. I even made like a little flag for them with a mule above Kerbin with wings and like a little star tattoo on its butt. Kind of funny flag, but really, you know, wholesome in its design. But it's a good little refueler. I, 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 I like it. It's a two-staged refueling craft. Both stages are completely recoverable. Now, I have heard a rumor that the closer you are to the KSC, the more money you get back when recovering it. So if you were to land on the opposite side of Kerbin, you would lose a lot of money. Unfortunately, I don't have the time, patience, or energy right now to figure out how to get the first stage to come back to the KSC, but it does land in one piece for now. Eventually, I'd love to make a refueling SSTO, but that's uh, gonna be a whole nother problem and I don't feel like diving into it right now. I think the SSS... I think the SSTO technology right now is more rocket SSTO technology. Very little emphasis... Fucking hell. Brain no connect to mouth. But basically, your typical jet engine inspired SSTO isn't really a thing right now. The jet engines are on board SSTOs, but but they're more like a tiny little help during ascent. And then during landing, they just help with a very empty, hollow, lightweight craft because there's no more, almost hardly any fuel in it to fly back to the landing strip. But they do not take the ship into space by any means. They aren't very powerful. So the SSTOs are more relying on rocket power than anything. Which means that they're going to be mostly fuel just to get up there. Which means that building a refueling SSTO is not completely possible at this moment in time because you'd burn like three-fourths of it just trying to get up there. But anyway, I digress. So yeah, it was pretty cool when I landed both of the refuelers 
back at the KSC and was very close to where, you know, the space plane hangar was. Like, dropping the ship right off at the front door. It's kind of nice. Next up, of course, was the actual moon lander itself. I didn't want to go for something teeny tiny like last time. The last lander had only like two passengers and one pilot and it was kind of small. No, I wanted something big, like really big. And it would play two roles, basically. The first role, of course, was to house the four tourists. So that would be their home, basically. It had a large hitchhiker container with a cockpit, and they would pretty much live in that container. That that would be their home. They'd have their own little space in there, do whatever they want, because this was going to be a long trip, several months maybe. Now, of course, they wouldn't just stay there forever. They could walk around the Enterprise, float around. <laughs> they could float around the Enterprise and use its food and, you know, exercise facilities and whatever, but, you know, they couldn't go into the, the main bridge or, you know, employees only area, crew only. But for the rest of the ship, they could use the facilities and stuff. But during landing, when it came to landing, on a moon or whatever it made more sense for them to have a large habitat and whatnot because you know they're going to want to stay there for a day or two and have fun and take selfies or whatever the case may be i don't know what year it is <laughs> i don't even know if selfies are even a thing yet i guess you could say it'd be like the 80s give or take i don't know i don't keep up with that shit but other than a moon lander it's very possible that the lander itself could double as a type of escape pod or lifeboat in case something happened to the enterprise so that was that was pretty cool it's kind of a dual purpose thing going on so once i got the lander up there docked successfully now i had to build something in order to transport the tourists to the enterprise a brand new passenger ssto when it comes to building sstos especially at this level of tech there's a lot of testing involved because you don't have all the control surfaces unlocked you don't have a bunch of other stuff unlocked so you have to make sure that what you have unlocked parts wise is capable of performing the job mind you that these sstos are mostly rocket powered i did utilize the new panther engine it does help a little on this ascent but i would say the percentage of help would probably 15 percent give or take mostly rockets do the job but it looks cool anyway in order to test the new ssto thoroughly i had to load it up to full capacity which meant that pretty much all of the astronauts in the ksc were on board this scientifically uh, all the was they're all on board the experimental ssto maybe not the greatest idea in the world but it's okay it, it it, it went by pretty much without a hitch. I was just trying to figure out its launch profile and descent profile, re-entry profile and all that jazz. But for the most part, the ship or the SSTO itself was designed well enough to where they would be fine. So once the SSTO was completely figured out, all of the launch profiles and all this other jazz, plus whatever tweaks I had with it to tweak it up a little bit more, better and whatnot, I decided to make it a stream. The stream would be a simple mission just to take these guys up to the Enterprise, dock with it, and then land the SSTO back. It would be boom, done. Really simple. Amazing how I say simple and it ended up being almost a two-hour stream, but that's KSP for you. Interestingly enough, we found out there was a few problems that I had not tested out yet, such as the fact that the underbelly docking port on the Enterprise could not actually dock with the SSTO. The hip boxes or whatever you call them, were bumping into each other just enough to keep it from actually docking. And not only that, but the SSTO itself was so big that it would kind of get in the way of itself trying to dock. I eventually had to disconnect the lander and then reconnect the SSTO to the Enterprise, transfer the tourists over, deconnect, dis deconnect, what the fuck? Disconnect the SSTO and then reconnect the lander. Oh my gosh, that was fun. But it was a really good stream and everybody had a great time. Plus I'm doing something new. This is the second stream where I actually show my face. Well, not completely, obviously. I try to be con inconspicuous. But I've noticed that this particular mask muffles my voice a little bit. And so it's kind of hard to understand me, which means I have to go back to the drawing board and find a mask that would actually allow me to talk. I'll figure it out eventually as the audience witnesses the evolution of this new format I'm going for. But for the most part, I engaged with the audience and everybody there, and it was great. Really fun to see everybody there, and we all had a great time. But that's pretty much it, other than maybe one more refueling mission just to top everything off before the Great Moon mission begins. I don't know if I should stream that or make a video of it, 
but because of the simple fact that if I stream it, it'll, it'll have to break it down to several hours or several streams, you know. I'm going to try to make it an hour per stream. The problem is, is that this is KSP, so an hour might not get very far. <laughs> Regardless, I, I actually do think that streaming it might be the better, better thing to do here. But let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for being a part of this channel. If you liked what you saw, please, please leave a like for the algorithm. And if you really, 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 really liked what you saw, consider subscribing. We also have a membership program. If you're interested, you can get a little, if you become a member, you can become a little emojis and badges and stuff next to your name. Pretty cool. Check it out. Don't forget to hit that bell notification as well so that YouTube doesn't leave you in the dust every time I upload something because YouTube will leave you in the damn dust if you don't hit that bell notification. But again, thank you again for being here. Love you all. Stay safe. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. Bye-bye.